to everyone. Welcome back to Face to Face Ministries with Solaria, which is myself. And we're going back over putting your dream to the test. So we're doing chapter three and four today. Go back, take a look at the other videos that we started. We're, we um, already went over the ownership question, taking ownership of your dream. That was in the first chapter. We went over the clarity question. Are you clear on what it is that you should be doing or are you clear on your dream? So we're going to jump right in and get started on chapter three because we're going to try to cover chapter three and four through this video. This is a mastermind that we're doing on putting your dream to the test. Let's get this done. Let's find out are we living our dream or someone else's. What I found out with reading this and that John also states and agree that this is one of the most important questions that we um, need to ask ourselves is that the reality question, is our dream truly a reality or a fantasy? So you want to make sure that your dream is a reality, a dream that you can obtain instead of just sitting up fantasizing about something that you know or you believe that would never come to pass because it's just a dream. Okay, now chapter through three, it goes that the reality question, am I depending on factors within my control to achieve my dream? Is a dream worth pursuing if it has no chance of becoming reality? Those are questions that we have to ask ourselves. And you have to ask these questions for yourself as well as I do for myself. Now, it also goes on to um, talk about wrong success mindset. Why are people who build their dreams on reality different than those who have dreams but are not intentional? Now, I look at this for myself. Building my dream on reality, on reality, why is it different from those who's building their dreams intentional? Reality, sometimes we could throw in and we might say to ourselves, how am I going to do this? Or is this possible? Instead of oh, just coming up with excuses. Or me just believing and intentionally making it possible. Making it happen by taking what I can do and, and intentionally walking and leading myself because I am a leader and I have to lead myself before I can lead anything or anyone. This is why I truly believe that me leading myself, living intentional, that I will every single day intentionally do something that will get me closer to my dream instead of allowing reality to come in and say, um, this is not possible or can I do this? Because sometimes we will do that when we think of um, being in the, re the realistic world, you know, because you see the dream. The dream is a passion. It's, a, it's something so huge. It's something that you, um, you, you also just fantasize. You just you know, have this thing inside of you and it's not yet come to fruitation. So that's reality, it's not here yet. But you can intentionally work towards that goal or that dream to make it a reality. So that's how I would answer that question for myself. Now it also says here, what is the difference between fantasizers 
who rely on luck and dream builders who rely on discipline. Ask yourself that question. Because me, myself, I don't believe in luck. I believe in building that dream, building that uh, building discipline. That's what I believe in, building discipline, changing my old ways that's not prospering me to get to my dream and just um, making new habits, doing something that I know that will. Now, it also says here, what is the difference between people who look for excuses and those who are only interested in results? Well, the difference is right there. People that's looking for excuses and those that only believe in results. You have some people, they're going to come up with an excuse for everything that they are not doing they're gonna have an excuse why. And it's a difference be between those that's looking for results because they wanna see, I want you to do it and let me see what's going to happen. Let me work towards that so I can see the result. I can see the fruit from it. I wanna see the fruit instead of looking at for excuses of why this can't or won't or is not going to take place. That's the difference. So he also goes on to say, we're going to talk about read the fine print. Oh my God. Now, Reading the fine print on our dream. Sometimes people don't want to read the fine print on their dream. Discipline is going to take hard work. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to gain patience. You're going to have to just um, go through uh, adversities. All of those things are going to take place when you're trying to follow your dream. So let's look right here what John has to say. Um, exactly uh, when you're following your dream, reading the fine print. What is the fine print when it comes to your dream? A, how long will the journey take? B, what obstacles will have to be overcome? C, how well do you handle disappointments? D, what disappointments will you be able to endure? E, what price are you willing to pay for your dream? Wow. What price? And I'm going to give you an example. When I actually joined the John Maxwell team, when he made by that is... I had to look at it myself in reality, as you see. And I had to ask myself, what am I willing to pay? What price am I willing to pay to obtain my dream? What price? And I don't mean just financial. I mean time, patience, as I stated before. Sometimes you're going to have to wait. Sometimes it's not going to happen overnight. Are you willing to walk in your dream, do what you have to do, and not get paid? How much are you willing to pay for your dream? I was willing to pay the price to go and become a John Maxwell team member, to go and take the course, to go and take the time to travel with him, go to different countries and, 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 and train other leaders there. I didn't get paid, but it gave me knowledge and experience, even though it took my time, because I had to give my time to someone else to accomplish a dream that they are trying to accomplish. What are you willing to pay? What price are you willing to pay? Are you willing to read the fine print and take that time 
and ask yourself those questions. What am I willing to do to accomplish my dream? And if you're not, then maybe it's not a dream. And we'll go through all of that as well. Maybe your dream is not your dream. Or you, maybe you're walking in the wrong dream. If you're not willing to pay the price for your dream, you might want to consider, is this my dream or is this someone else's dream? Let's move on. Now, it goes on to say here, how do you respond to reality? Why is it important to know your strengths and weaknesses before moving towards your dream? Why is that important? Is your dream built on your real strengths? Why do you suppose is it is important to build on your strengths as opposed to building on your weaknesses. Well, he goes on to say, and this is my belief, building on my strength is only gonna make me better, make me more powerful, make me more um, capable and comfortable in doing what it is I'm already gifted by God to do. Now, building on my weaknesses that's something that I can I, I feel like that is not something that was gifted to me. That's something that I would learn. Something I could study and go to school to do something or be trained to do a thing. And but it's my weakness. I'm not going to flourish in that. Because that's not my gift. That's not my calling. My strength as to opposing to build on my weaknesses will only strengthen me. And I want to invest more time and more energy in my strengths than I do what, where I'm weak at. Because I can only be more powerful in the wrong one. That's just like Michael Jordan. And I'm just telling you a story about Michael Jordan. We know that Michael Jordan's strength was in his playing basketball. He was excellent, one of the top people in the industry when he came to basketball. Just no joke, it was a gift that he had. But playing baseball, remember when he went to go play baseball? He was very weak at that. I mean, he probably couldn't even make it to the little leagues. <laughs> Seriously. As much as he practiced and tried, that was a weakness. He did not flourish in that. But when it came to basketball, even though he practiced just the same, he flourished in basketball. That was his gift. He put more time, more energy in that basketball because that was his passion. And that's what he was gifted at. So those, that's a good example of going with you, putting more energy in your strengths over your, than you would in your, with, your weak, with, with something that you're weak in, something that you have to really work hard at when you could put more energy in something that just flows and it just happens. Now let's move on. Now it says here, Number one, building on your strengths activates the law of least effort. What is the law of least effort? How would I, how would it affect your life? Number two, building on your strengths enables consistently good results. What are the effects of consistency building on your strengths? Number three, building on your strengths gives you the highest return. My strengths 
And I'm just going to explain what my strengths are. And you could put in the comments what your strengths are so someone else could glean from you as well. Well, my strength is communication. I love to talk to other people. I can get with someone, a total different stranger, total stranger, and I am I have a gift for God. I can gab along with you. I can talk to you. I have no fear of talking one-on-one -on -one with a group. I love people, and I love communing. I love connecting with other people. That's my gift. It's to connect with other people, sharing with the knowledge that I have with other people and learning from other people as well. That's my gift. My gift is communicating, talking. My gift is, is just helping, inspiring, encouraging. That's no problem for me to talk to someone and encourage them and inspire them and to push them and tell them, you can do this. I know you can do this. To just encourage. That's my gift, to uplift. That's where I shine. Now, technology, I don't shine there. I have to really study, learn, and push myself. It's not as easy for me when it comes to technology. So, those are my strengths. So, put in the comment what your strengths are. I would love to know that. Okay. It says, is your dream built on your real habits? We are what we, um, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Aristotle stated this. I'll read it again. It says, we are what we, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Why is excellent not an act, but a habit? Do you have the right habits to achieve your dreams? What habits do you need to break that are not conductive to your dream. Now, I will go over the habits that I need to break and the habits that I've picked up. I picked up habits whereas I intentionally, even being on um, YouTube, I intentionally go out and I connect with other people. I intentionally get up every single day and I perfect purposefully Find something that I need to do that's going to get me to my goal or my dream every single day. I made that out of a habit. Doing something every single day that's going to get me to my goal or to my dream. To follow uh, closer to my dream. Every day. Don't miss a day. Now, the bad habits that I had to break is when I would give myself uh, excuses of how busy I was doing other things that wasn't getting me closer to my dream. And I would say, oh, well, this is my dream. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. But when I surrounded myself with people that has accomplished great things and goals that they wanted to do, I wanted to know how. How, what did they do? If you were so busy, what did you do? You have to change your mindset. You have to change your thinking, your way of thinking. Because everyone wasn't brought up around people that would show them how. Or tell them how. And I wasn't. I was one of those individuals. So I had to surround myself with people that did know how to get there. Or that found a way how to follow things you had to do. And so I took that upon myself 
to discipline myself, to read a book, to follow my dream, read leaders that I honored and respected. Just surround yourself around those people. Pick up those books that's going to lead you in the direction that you want to go. Instead of doing things every day that's going to take you away from your dream. Those are habits that I had to realize and break. Now, it goes on to say, make reality your ally. What habits do you need to develop that are conductive to your personal achievement? Application. We're going to go over some applications that we can apply to our lives or we can answer uh, in order to um, follow our dream, to put our dream to the test. Now, what I like what you would do, what I would like for you to do is rate yourself one to ten. Ten being the best of the best. I don't have to do anything. I am excellent. And one or two, I'm just terrible. <laughs> I just need some help. So I'm going to go over these um, few questions. And I want you to ask the, answer these questions yourself honestly and rate yourself. Okay. Questions to answer in your journey. What are the oh, it says what are the qualities needed in a person who desires to accomplish your dream? What background and what kind of experiences does that kind of person usually possess? What skills do you need to acquire to be able to bridge the gap to your dream? How long will it take you to acquire these skills? What will it cost you to possess those experiences and acquire those skills? What habits must you begin cultivating today in order to become someone who can achieve this dream? What people whom you respect affirm that you are or have the potential to become someone who can achieve this dream? What do you expect to be the greatest obstacle you will face while working to achieve this dream? How long do you expect the accomplishment of your dream to take? How much work will it acquire, require? Wow. Well, my plans here for me is to surround myself, as I stated earlier, with individuals um, that would help me, that would encourage me, inspire me, that has achieved more than I have so that I can glean from them to work as hard as I can to change habits that I need to change to get me closer to my dream. Make sure that in chapter three, this is the reality question, make sure that your dream is realistic. And what I mean by realistic we could dream, how many times children have dreamed that they could fly? That's not a realistic dream. That's not something 
that they would ever accomplish. It doesn't matter how hard they dream it. That's something that would never happen because it's not realistic. They don't have wings. So you can't just fly. You can get in the airplane and fly. That's what I mean about being realistic with your dream. Can you accomplish that dream? Is it obtainable? That's chapter three. We're going to move on to chapter four. Knock it out the park. Yes, let's go. Now, chapter four is the passion question. Oh, I love this one because it's a passion. You have to have that passion if you want to succeed in your dream. Because our dreams come from God. Our hopes and our dreams, that's that passion that's going to drive you, that's going to pull you, that's going to keep you going regardless. It's that passion. You'll be able to do it regardless because you have that passion. It's in your heart. That's why I love the passion question. So if you don't have the passion to do what you're doing, Again, this came from John Maxwell, and I love that quote. Do what you love and love what you do. Because that's a, such a passion that you have to have in your heart to not be miserable doing something every single day and you're unhappy about it. Oh, my God. That is not the life that we are supposed to live. Let's get into chapter four, y'all. Now, chapter four, the passion question. Does my dream compel me to follow it? If you are working on something exciting that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you. That was said by Steve Jobs. What are the implications of that statement? The passion creates possibilities. Passion is a critical element of, any, of anyone who wants to achieve a dream. Why? Because it is the starting point of all achievements. The power of passion. How would you rate your level of passion for your dream today? One, passion pulls us up, enables us to overcome adversities. I know that's true. Because when you have a passion for something, you're going to be up here some days and you're going to be down here some days. Some days you're just not going to want to feel like doing it, but you're going to get up and you're going to do it because you know that's a passion there and there's nothing you're going to allow to stop you from following that dream or that goal because you have it in your heart, as I stated earlier. And it's just something that's just pulling you. Oh, you better ask somebody. Now, it says here, how does having passion for a cause enables you to overcome adversity? What is going to carry you through the tough times? That's what's going to carry you through the tough times. Your passion for it. Because you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have adversities. They will arise. A. What do I have to study while others are sleeping? B. What is it that I need to prepare? Prepare what others are about is talking about it. What is it that I have to prepare while others are just talking? C. What is it that I need to persist and while others have quit? 
I have to persist. I have to keep pushing. Well, some people have just quit and given up. What is it that I have to do? Those are things you want to ask yourself. Okay, number two, passion pushes us out. Give us initiative. Between your dreams, inspiration, and its manifestation, what kind of efforts will you have to make for it to work? To succeed in life, we must stay within our strength zone, but continually move outside our comfort zone. Oh, I love that. I'm going to read that one again. It says, to succeed in life, we must stay within our strength zone, but continuously get up out of our comfort our comfort zone you have to get that's what passion will do passion will pull you out of your comfort zone it will pull you into something you think you would never be able or you would never do because it's it doesn't feel good it's uncomfortable but your passion will pull you up out of there because you know it's going to get you closer to your dream i love that one number three Passion possess, passion positions us well, giving us the greatest odds of for success. How does passion bring out the gifts, talents, and abilities in you? Why is it deter why is it determinal to our potential? When we stay in our comfort zone. Sorry, let's read that again. Why is it detrimental to our potential when we stay in our comfort zone? Ask yourself that question. It's detrimental because you will never be able to reach your dream. You have to come out your comfort zone to be able to make it to that place, that, that, that vision, that end line that you're trying to get to. Get out of that comfort zone. Why does passion position you for greater odds of success in obtaining your dreams? Why does safe living and staying in your comfort zone make people feel regret in the later in their latter years? Because they wish they wish they would have done it. But when they're in that comfort zone, they feel safe. And when you're doing something you've never done before, sometimes fear step in, steps in, and you don't do it. You don't accomplish it. And so when you get older, you have regrets. And this is why we're studying putting your dream to the test. So we won't have any regrets because it's never too late no matter what age you are it's never too late and it's never too early to start okay let's move on it says here what are some of the should have that people repeat as they advance in years. Guitar Man. What caused Bob to be a compelled to make guitars? What caused Bob to be so compelled to make guitars? This is a story about the guitar man. What 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 compelled him to make guitars? Okay, it says, my passion get uh, my passion gauge. Where are you on this scale? We're going over the passion gauge. Where are you on this scale? Remember, 
You want to um, rate yourself 1 through 10. My passion is so hot that it sets others' people on fire. Okay. My passion is so hot that it sets other people on fire. That's 10. 9. I cannot imagine my life without my dream. Eight. I will, I willingly sacrifice other important things for it. Seven. I am fired up by it and often preoccupied with it. Six. I enjoy it as one of many interested. Five, I can take it or leave it. Four, I prefer not to think about it. Three, I go out of my way to avoid it. Two, I've put it on my list of favorite things. And number one, I would rather have a root canal without <laughs> anesthesia. <laughs> now that's rating yourself from one to 10. And I started at 10 and I worked myself down. So rate yourself one to 10 where you stand on that uh, chart. Stroking the fire. Let's go over stroking the fire. Number one, take into account your natural temperature. Number two, keep your eye on what's important. Number three, overcome the fear of being different from others. Oh, wow, that's important. A lot of people um, have not accomplished that yet. Overcoming that fear of being different. We were all created different and unique. So overcome that fear of being different from others. Number four. Resist the empathy that often accompanies aging. Which of the previous insights identifies what you need to overcome to have your dream compelled to you going for it? Application. This is why I did two, three and four together because they were short and powerful. Now, this is what we need to apply to our life. That's what application is. It's time to apply it. Application, the passion question. Again, rate yourself from one to 10 as I go through these questions. In what area of your life do you dis display the most initiative? If you could spend the rest of your life doing one thing, what would it be? What type of activities usually drain you of energy? What activities give you energy? What issues or causes always fire you up? How are your purpose? The things that give you energy and your dream related. If they are not now connected, how can you work to make them connected? How can you incorporate more passion producing activities into your daily schedule. Do you need 
to adjust or fine tune your dream so that your passion, purpose, and dream are aligned. If you believe that you do, if you believe that you do need to make changes, what will it take for you to make them? Answer those questions. One through ten, and make sure that we are putting our dream to the test. Well, that is the end of this session. I want to thank you guys so, so much. And those of you that has not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Leave a genuine comment, and I will check out your channel as well. God bless every last one of you. Go back and check out the other videos. Now, I do have another channel on YouTube, and it's called Eating with Miss P. I will leave the link down at the bottom. You can also click on that link and go check that out. It's a mukbang channel, and we are all connected as one. God bless you, and I'm looking forward to chapter five and six with you guys. What we do here is peace and toodles. Until next time, I love you, and Jesus loves you too. Bye.